Nothing evokes more memories than food, what we ate, where we ate it, and with whom. That's the opening introduction to Lost Restaurants of Grand Rapids, a new book by author Norma Lewis about notable restaurants that once were open for business here. I spoke recently with Lewis, who's lived in West Michigan for more than 25 years and personally remember some of the places she wrote about. Places such as the Schnitzelbank on Jefferson Street, which served authentic German cuisine for 70 years until closing in 2008. Or Rosie's Diner near Rockford, which featured the diner originally from New Jersey, where TV commercials for Bounty, the quicker picker-upper, were filmed. Lewis writes about Ritzy's Hamburgs near Park Congregational Church and the Banquet Barbecue downtown, both eye-catching buildings that once were part of the landscape in Grand Rapids, but are no more. She tells stories of fine dining in the Colonial Room for breakfast and the Mocha Room for dinner in the Pantlin Hotel, now the Amway Grand Hotel. The book published by the History Press also talks about eating at soda fountains, such as West Drug Store, or at lunch counters, such as Northfield Lanes, all popular places to eat back in the day. At Haddam's Restaurant on South Division, you could listen to Maxine George, the daughter-in-law of owner Deeb Haddam, playing organ to entertain diners. When Swain's Barbecue in Wyoming opened, it offered free malts to kids. So many came, owners had to move outside to the parking lot. In the Cody Hotel, which once stood at Division Avenue and Fulton Street, the celebrated showman Buffalo Bill supplied buffalo heads that decorated the restaurant owned and operated by his kinsmen. At another hotel, the Morton House on Monroe Avenue in the 1960s, they opened the Kitten Club with young cocktail waitresses dressed to resemble the waitresses in Hugh Hefner's Playboy Clubs. The waitresses were supposed to be no older than 26, but one made national headlines when her employers learned Fran Stout really was a 37-year-old mother of nine. Grand Rapids' favorite son, President Gerald Ford, who represented West Michigan in Congress before becoming president, famously ate breakfast at Granny's Kitchen on Election Day after voting. Ford lost his presidential re-election bid in 1976, and Granny's Kitchen closed a few years later. Many more restaurants in the Grand Rapids area have come and gone. You can read about many more in Lost Restaurants of Grand Rapids.